Uh, welcome, friends and scoundrels, to the Thinking Outside the Box sister <laughs> podcast to our Dungeon Crate opening. I'm Bran. I'm Lynn. And uh, we're going to start taking a little bit different take on this and use this as our opportunity to actually review the box. Um, so starting next month, we'll do pretty much just a straight unboxing. Completely free of our opinions. Or as much so as can be. <laughs> uh, some things will probably still slip in there, but we'll try to keep <laughs> those ones neutral. Um, but here we're going to be unabashed and... Honest. Honest. A couple of other things real quick. One, spoiler alerts, because I'm going to talk about the adventure. Um, this one might be a little bit longer, too. I think we should talk about last month's. I really need to get this off my chest. <coughs> I don't know about you. I don't understand the point of the cough suppressant if I'm going to keep coughing anyway. <laughs> right? Um, and I, I, God, I got to take a moment to gloat because I just thought about this. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't like the, I'm, I'm going to talk about RPG Crate real quick. Because one of the reasons why I ended up not liking them is I get ads for them every now and again on Facebook. And it's always one of those mudslinging style ads. Hey, are you trying tired of getting crappy loot in your other crates that you get? Buy ours. It's so much better. And I think karma or whatever the hell you want to call it has finally come back around to them. And they were late um, last month or the month before, like a month late. Uh, one of the guys who I watch who gets that crate, I like. I still like to see what they what they put in their box. Um, it just the stuff they put in there doesn't fit my needs. Or, or anything. So, that's an, that, that's the main reason why I don't get it. But, um, I don't like getting an adventure module, an entire book every month. It just, most people don't have the time to run that kind of stuff. And, but that's beside the point. I just, I just think it's funny that they're starting to have some serious problems with their product now. After all their mudslinging that they've done. Because I consider myself relatively loyal to Dungeon Crate. I like Wayne. I like what he does. For the most part. He gets annoying sometimes on his Facebook life. Sorry, Wayne. It's honest. <laughs> um, anyways, did you have anything you were going to say there? I mean, last month's box aside. Oh. Yeah, so let's talk about last month's <laughs> box real, real quick. Um... It was just, if I was a new subscriber and that was the first box I got, it would be one stars and I would probably do everything in my power to get my money back. It was that bad. Um, I know Wayne's a huge coffee enthusiast and it's one of the things I think started happening with the boxes, why they're becoming a little bit subpar there for a while. Because I, I felt so bad because I don't like making such... I, I don't like having so many negative things to say, but it just... It's hard when I'm paying this money for this and it seems like Wayne's tailoring these boxes to himself and not to his customers. And to be completely honest again... Watching his Facebook lives, like I said, he gets a little bit annoying on there, but I feel like a lot of the people on there are just yes people, and and they just feed into <coughs> the things he's interested in. And to some degree, that's okay, but there's more of a customer base out there, so if there's anybody else who's been feeling a little bit let down or whatever... And I obviously have absolutely no idea how many subscribers Wayne has to his box, but he's got to be doing pretty decent with it. Um, I mean, there he, he started getting some detractors at one point, and I wanted to tell him, but he's just such a nice guy and always so upbeat and positive. I didn't want to bring him down, but, you know, detractors aren't a bad thing. When you start getting detractors, that means you're kind of on a road to success. And... Like I said a couple boxes ago, 
I'm still in this. You know, we, we bought in for the year. Honestly, I canceled it after the last one. Was hoping to get my money back, but it didn't. So we're stuck for a year. Um, not to, not for that to sound completely bad. You know, things might turn around. And I've got a year. If if it does turn around and I like it, no, I can resubscribe still. It's not like we're not capable of doing that. Right. Um. But it just. <laughs> anyways, back back to the point. Kind of diverge there. A little bit on a tangent. Um, Wayne's a huge coffee enthusiast, and that's awesome. But I'm not subscribed to Dungeon Crate to get coffee. Coffee is a very personal thing. Everybody has their taste, and I, I hate to say it, that coffee was crap. It really was. <laughs> and it was full. It, it was whole bean, and. Again, I don't know how many people out there have their own coffee grinders, but I don't think there's that many. No one we know has one. Yeah, no one we know has one. And we know some coffee snobs. Well, you know some coffee snobs. (laughs) But it, you know, it's just a weird, random thing to get in your box, and the adventure that went along with it, oh my god. That that I think that's what upset me the most. The coffee was one thing, but the adventure is a level for a level six party. But it was a level one style adventure. Is a freaking um, what are what are those called? Emissary. Escort mission. Escort that one. That's yep. the word. Um, it was an escort mission. That that's something you do at level one. I mean, the miniature in that box was really cool. That's one that I've been, had my eye on for a while. The Carrion Worm from Reaper. Um, which, I got that painted up. Maybe take a picture of it. Yeah. Throw it up. Um, but, and I know what it ended up looking like. Nobody make any stupid comments, please. <laughs> that was not the intent. I was just trying to... I, I like to try to do things a little bit different with my miniatures. But... What else was in that box? There's a carrion worm. Oh, the digital crate with that one. Um, one of the things I suggested a, a while ago, I think I threw it into one of my ramblings, was um, putting paper craft um, set dressing stuff. So in the digital crate, there was a cart that you could download and print off and build. And I thought about it originally when he had the mimic one. I'm like, this would be really cool. This would be really cool to have for, like, carts or uh, tables would be a little bit difficult. But, you know, other things like that that go along with the adventure and help an aspiring DM who doesn't have a whole lot of stuff, maybe doesn't have a whole lot of time. Um, I try to look at these boxes from the perspective of I'm a DM who doesn't have a whole lot of time and I want to be able to open my box and run my adventure. Now, miniatures aside, that's a whole other thing to deal with. I know it's hard to pack that many in and keep the cost down, especially with this current one. But those are the ways around that. Um, Like I said in the main video, if he got out there a couple months in advance, he could, you know, there'd be more opportunity to get some paper craft minis in there to substitute for NPCs and maybe some of the monsters or whatever if there isn't room for Ark Knight or um, somebody else, whoever else he's working with it for that month. Um, God, what else was in that box? I forget. There wasn't any advanced deployment, which was a first. Like, the, it's not that they were late or anything, they just weren't there. I can't remember but I feel like that was it so we had the adventure the coffee there was some kind of pen or button or something wasn't there I don't think so I don't know that's how underwhelming this box was <laughs> I was just so upset about <laughs> the, the stupid coffee I was and <laughs> cause that's like the whole thing was the coffee yeah the cop man not not to get hung up on it, but it just... Like, I opened the box and I was like, what the hell is this? This isn't, you know, one of those fancy women monthly boxes where you just get random crap. 
because I'm sure there's one of those out there. Just send me random treats and stuff to make me feel better. There is. So anyways, <laughs> um, that's enough prattling on about the past. Let's talk about the present. So overall thoughts on this month's box, lady person. I I have to remember that we're missing the advanced deployment stuff, so I have to remember that that stuff is hopefully still going to come, which is actually what I'm really <laughs> excited about because I love the uh, flight sands. Flight sands, yes. But <laughs> that aside, I don't. The coin was my favorite thing. I love the Rivendell coin. I'm I'm not big on the coins. I'm not big on the coins, but I do love the Rivendell coin. I like the Shire Post ones better than the uh, something forgery. Found, I'll, I'll, foundry something foundry. <laughs> Starts with E. Why can't I think of it? <coughs> it? Anyways. Yes, I do like the Shire Post ones better, and I do I love. The Rivendell one. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of the coins that have been really cool in the past. Like, um, the Durin one is one of my favorites. And that was another Shire Post. That was another Shire Post. But that's that's what makes Shire Post nice, is that they do the movie-oriented stuff, or the early TV shows, or whatever they do. That's yeah, because the uh, Breaker of Chains was also mm -hmm. Shire Post. I think we got a Conan one, or there was a Conan one at some point in the past, too. Um, but yeah, I just, <coughs> I'm not a coin collector, and sometimes it's a little much. It's another one of those things that's, like, Wayne pushing his favorite things in the what, box. What is it he says? We, we, we love coins, so you get them too? Yeah, which, I mean, a coin, if he keeps it to, like, once a quarter... Isn't too bad. Rare element foundry. Yes, rare element foundry. <laughs> <laughs> um, if he keeps it to once a quarter, it's not as bad. Um, like, sometimes with the dice, I feel like some of the other boxes that talk about giving dice all the time. It's like, no, I don't want to dice every single month. Or a die or set of dice or whatever every single month. That's too much. But and especially if it's just going to be just plain chess X dice. Give me once a quarter something awesome. Yeah. Or, you know, like Wayne does with his, that um, they're relevant to the game usually. Yes. Um, like those three-sided D4s. Yes, and the game science aside, they are the something awesome. They're the... Uh, the... The... the not death D fours. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the, the not caltrops. Yeah. <laughs> um. So there's usually some kind of relevance with the dice that we get in the dungeon crate. There's a game or something. Excuse me. There's a game or something that goes along with it. It's why this month with the D fourteen. Wow, that was a nice segue. <laughs> I'm taking credit for it. <laughs> Wasn't even planned. No, um, I'm taking credit. Like the D14, I noticed that it has the um, days of the week on it, so that's an interesting aspect. Kind of random. Um, but there, there is nothing along this month to go with this die. So that's, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe there would have been a better space for it or something somewhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of weird. I mean, we started doing the step down, the 20, the 12, the 10. And then the 14. And then we didn't have one. Because that was missing last month, too. Yes. So it seems like... Not, not that I mind, because I hate the game science dice. Sorry, yeah. game science. I, you know, I've, <laughs> most of the people I've heard talk about these just have nothing but great things to say and I'm like okay cool I'll give them you know I'd like to give them a shot they're a little bit pricey so maybe someday and then we start getting them in the dungeon crate and I am less than enthused about them 
Like, the entire set that we got was junk. Yeah. And I get that they were kind of leftovers, so they were cheaper, and it made it easier for Wayne to get it in there, but the reason why he went to the single ones is so that way he could get a little bit better dice in there, I think, and they're still kind of garbage. Yeah, that, what, the 10 was it that had that big chunk? Oh my goodness, that was huge. It rolls the same number every time because of it. And I even cleaned that up, didn't I? Yeah. Or have I yet? No, I think I decided that I wasn't going to worry about it because they're just going to use them as a table dressing or whatever. Yeah, but it rolls the same number every time. So we've got weighted times. Yeah. <laughs> um. <coughs> so yeah, we'll just finish out the game science. Like I said, I'm just going to use them as dress as set dressing on the table when we record videos and stuff. Um. But. I suppose we go on to the, uh, what about that Dungeon Master pin? What about Dungeon Master pin? Yeah, this isn't as smooth as the segue. <laughs> you can have credit for it, though. <laughs> Ten points from Hufflepuff. <laughs> Maybe we should just give it five. Um, I hadn't looked at it before we recorded the video. Shame on me. Um, not as impressive as I initially thought it was while it was in the package. Like, I glanced at it in the package, but it wasn't, I didn't pull it out and look at it or anything. And I expected it to be a little bit thicker, maybe because of the sword. Maybe. But, I mean, it's still a really cool pin. Uh, that gemstone's probably going to fall off before probably, too long. Probably, I was just about to say that. <laughs> probably going to be gone after the first game or two. <laughs> Because we, of course, put all our pins and buttons on our game bag. Yep. Because where else should they go? Exactly. <laughs> We're going to need a bigger bag soon. <laughs> Probably. There's more books coming that we're going to have to carry around. Uh, um. Yeah, so that, that's my but thoughts on it. I'm neither here nor there on the pins. The sword one, also. I do like the the enamel D21, but the pins in general, I'm neither here nor there on. They're cool. I could take them or leave them. They are what they are. Yeah. I'd like to get back to getting some more stickers. Wayne said he was going to try to do that, and he lied to me. Disappointed. Feel betrayed? <laughs> Feel betrayed! <laughs> Dicker, dicker, dickers! <laughs> Sorry, we binge-watched uh, South Park a couple weeks ago. <laughs> All 21 seasons. <laughs> um, the other button, and they admitted that we'd gotten it in the past. Maybe maybe they're not supposed to be such good buttons. No, that's a terrible thing to say. They're, they're, they're pretty basic buttons. They are pretty basic buttons. I mean, it's cool. I've got one to update the other one because it is all scuffed up. It is taking quite the beating. I was going to take it and put it on my apron at work. You can take the beat up one then. Okay. Because it is quite beat up because <laughs> it's, at the, it's at the bottom of the bag too, so it takes all the hits. Yeah, I was honestly a little bit surprised that they even put it on the card because I thought it was just an extra item. So the... Miniatures, I guess? Is that where we're at? Mm -hmm. They're kind of jumping around a little bit and not following the card at all. Were we supposed to? I don't know. I, I didn't know. even give my overall impressions here, but I give them in the other video, so... I never give anything first the card. Um, like I said in the main unboxing video, the Beast Man is something that's been on my list for... since we started playing honestly, and started wanting to get miniatures. Um, we just... We've had other things that we've needed to get or that we've wanted to get or whatever has prevented us from getting these. There hasn't been a place for us to put them in the game yet, so... In any of our games yet. So... There's that. I, I honestly was a little bit disappointed, though, that it wasn't an actual Minotaur. 
But I did look at Reaper's website, and it might be because they're out of like all the cost-effective minotaurs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Miniatures are your thing. But, I mean, it's still not terribly disappointing because, again, it's something that I've wanted and it, it'll it work in the... If, if I were to open this and need to run the game, I wouldn't be disappointed that I didn't have something to represent a Minotaur. That's true. I mean, he's got all the things that the Minotaur in the adventure module is supposed to have, so it just... You lifted me up so high, Wayne, and tore me down again. I feel so betrayed. <laughs> You're such a child. I am. Um, <coughs> and then the other miniature, like I said in, in the main unboxing video, not the one I would have chosen. Um, I forget her name, but there's another miniature that's a half or an elfish, half elf or elf cleric could be either one. But a cleric, and she's pretty much just wearing a robe and pulling her hood back. She actually almost looks like an NPC. And I think that would have been a much better use for um, this situation because this elf doesn't match any of the other NPCs that have relevance to the module. And the sword and the staff, you know... It's one of those things that, like I said, it's just a physical representation, but if I sit down at the table and you pull this out, I'll be like, it's going to disrupt the illusion a little bit. Because I've, I've had people do that to me in the past. Oh my god, he doesn't. that miniature doesn't actually have a sword. Well, no, I don't have any control over that, but... <clears throat> Maybe she's one of the elves that goes looking for the missing elf. I look through it, she's not... Well, I didn't look through it. You don't ever hand it to me. Because I addressed that. <laughs> well, it's because you don't usually look at it. Um, Yeah, this card thing. This map piece on the back. Honestly, not really my cup of tea, but I still think it's really cool that they're starting to do this. It was a waste of space before, and now it's not. Yep. It's it's something that's usable, um, and I hope it re maintains its usefulness, by maintaining the theme with it. Yeah, if I that's mean, the only piece of blue tunnel we get. Then it's gonna kind of <laughs> be weird. A little bit, yeah. Um, or anything. I mean, you could really put anything on the back there that right would work. You could put. Because I said it was the tavern one where I suggested that they could have put the tavern on the back because that's like the perfect size for a little tavern. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe that would be a better idea, because then Wayne could just do whatever willy-nilly thing he wants. Um, put buildings or something <laughs> on it, and then you could just glue it to a piece of cardboard or foam or whatever, and you have a nice, neat little building there. Yeah. Because that would be another thing, too, rather than just, like, little sections of dungeon. That's, that's good for, you know, little houses that you're breaking and entering into, or little stores. Just little... Random things that normally you just theater of the mind through to just have a representation of to be available. Yeah. Or, you know, even, well, you were probably thinking of bartender floor or a bar floor or whatever, yeah, right? I was thinking of bar floor. That's what I suggested. Uh, when, you said, when you said it, I was thinking of like the tavern the front. No, I was thinking of the tavern room. front or even like the wall in a tavern where the bar would be. Tavern layout. Tavern floor. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, I want, I want to touch back on, on Lysette, though, real quick, because I forgot about this. Um, there's a lot going on in this adventure, and I think it would have been, this would have been a great opportunity to utilize um, Arknight minis and get some extra crap in here. Because, well... I suppose, hey, we got another semi-seamless segue here. <laughs> um, there's a lot of monsters in here. I mean, you've got a male NPC character who... Uh, I think he's supposed to just take them to the maze. I'm not sure. 
There are some random encounters in here. And you got one, two, three, four, six of them. So, that's, well, five different monsters. And then you've got, what, six different treasure rooms. Plus the central chamber that all have, mm, some of them, multiple monsters. Some of them. Black pudding. No. Um, like, room one's got a Medusa in it. Room two has a Shambling Mound, which I think was one of the suggestions that I saw. Um, room three's two Gibbering Mouthers, which was my suggestion. I thought it was Gibbering. Gibbering, Gibbering, whatever. Whatever. Two Gibbering Mouthers. Um, Faceless Wars if you're going to be Reaper. <laughs> um, but like I said, that was my suggestion. I'm, I'm really proud of that. But when he said, when, when he initially put that post up, like I said, that that was my opportunity to see how far in advance he is planning these boxes. And he might have a basic plan a little bit in advance, but he really needs <laughs> to, hey, these are the things that I want to do. I think it would really help help the small companies that he's working with. Not to get off on too much of a tangent, but it would also help him ensure that boxes are more more likely to be complete and on time. You don't know. Maybe he just had the same idea as you. Well, no, there's other things. Like, I think the Manticore was one of them on there. Maybe Rust he Monsters. already had that one. <coughs> and it's just coincidence. Uh, but there's a Gorgon in room five, the Manticore in room four. And eight. Eight rust monsters. But they're only like a challenge rating two or maybe it's only a half. They're not they're not supposed to be terribly powerful monsters. And then you got your center chamber which has the obvious in it. So yeah, that's that's kind of the rundown on the adventure. There's I tried reading through the opening and it's not terribly clear on some of the things that are going on. Like I said, I'm not sure if this NPC is supposed to be going with you or or if he's just supposed to take you to the maze or if he's just there. I think he goes with you. Do I, I don't remember. It's been a week since I read it too, so. A, a week? Didn't you just read it just a minute ago? No. No. No, I think. I was just looking at the you. monsters and stuff. I mean, why, would you give, why would you give him stats if he's not coming with you? <coughs> well, because it also says he's a bandit. So, like, is he supposed to betray us or what? Good. <laughs> yeah, that's like... You don't know? Yeah, it's just, it doesn't really say. Well, it's something for you to build off of, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's okay with it being empty. Or, not <coughs> empty, but being open um, for use. You know, which which may be part of it. And I know Wayne's working on a book with some of these things. And he, I'm under the impression that he's going to um, expand on them a little bit more. From the adventures that we get in the box. Which is fine. Which I think is actually not a bad idea. Hey, here's a pretty good sample of what I'm doing. No, go buy my book. Get more stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you know, the, it still hits on one of my main points that it doesn't really follow the story arc that Wayne started with Xander's Lost Lord <laughs> that went on for three or four adventures and then just kind of stopped and we started getting a bunch of random crap based on whatever whim Wayne was on at the moment. Not the way you thought it was going to go. Well, it, the devil's advocate here. That's an okay point, but at the same time, like he started building this up and said, we're going to go somewhere with this, and then we didn't go anywhere. It's not to say that you can't use this as part of it, but 
you know, again, coming from the point of view of a DM who maybe doesn't have a whole lot of money or whatever, or doesn't have the time to do a lot of prep and is able to open a box and have something going on, it it doesn't fit into that that area. But it doesn't really fit you know what what was started now again that isn't to say that you can't do a little bit of prep work to tie it in and we're running storm king's thunder and well you're the only one in there and you're pretty good at not metagaming i am pretty good at not metagaming but i i have to be but i'm thinking about we well i was originally and, and this is why I'm so upset is because I was using it the way that I was thinking. I was trying to run it, run it as a campaign for um, the one group of players that we had that we had to drop. Because we just don't have the time to commit to that much stuff. Um, and I s started running this and I've got to build with my players and their characters that they've created and try to figure out how they fit in the world and what's going to happen with them and consequences of their actions and how certain things relate to their backstory and I don't know what's going on partially because it's a surprise each month what we're going to get but at the same time like we started building on this thing and I have no idea where it's going now there's no continuation and for anybody who might have started that, that, that could be a real big disappointment. But since we had to let that other party go, um, we're going to start using some of the Dungeon Crate stuff in our other game in Storm King's Thunder to just make it a little bit different. Um, that's also part of the purpose of this. I've got a really, really, really fun, interesting idea for, uh, what was that? The Carnival of Carnage? What? The Carnival of Carnage. Do you remember that event? Mm. That one? That box? Yeah. The Something. October one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I've got a really fun idea to use that one for Storm King Thunder. It's actually, like, as soon as I opened it and read the adventure, um... The idea came to me to use it this way. But, I don't know, some of the random encounters and stuff or whatever in Storm King's Thunder are a little weird. And for a lot of it, it seemed spoilers for Storm Kings, kinda, I guess. Um, it seems like a lot of that you're just kinda roaming around until it's time to just go act. And I've only kind of scanned through, read, like I've read it, but I haven't applied a whole lot of time to reading that far ahead. I have not, because I'm a player in that one, so... And I haven't quite yet, like I started to, because like, alright, I've got all these things going on, how is it going to play out? Uh, this character gave me some interesting things that I need to try to figure out what to work with, and, well, that's all going away now, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but, it, it, it just seems like it's wandering around the wilderness trying to figure out what's going on, and or just wandering around, and then all of a sudden it's time to go act. And then you finish the campaign. But, um, my overall impressions on this box, eh, not a bad one. I think we've kind of gotten back a little bit to what I expect from Dungeon Crate. Some pretty okay boxes. And I don't ever expect to be completely wowed and blown away like maybe some of their first couple boxes. Where it was really, I think, you know, you're trying to really make a statement. But... Like I said, we, we've gotten back to kind of what I expect in this box from Dungeon Crate. Uh, I haven't looked to see. Have you looked to see what next month's uh, theme is? Uh, no, I kind of. I just don't. I mean, I'm not doing anything. 
can look. So next month's crate is a shady situation. So hopefully my schedule isn't so freaking crazy at work. I've worked early and mid shifts all this last week. Like we got our box and I worked at like 10 o'clock and I worked at like 11 o'clock and then I worked at 9 o'clock and... <laughs> but yeah, I just worked a bunch of early shifts and by the time I got home and everything, wasn't in the mood for recording, finally had a day off to record, so that's the main reason why we're so late. I don't know, I just, if Wayne listens to this, I wouldn't listen to this, this rambles on. Stay down this path, man. I, I think this is your best choice. But I'm just saying, you know, there, there's competition coming up. Um, they're young and they're trying to figure themselves out, but I think they saw what you were doing and saw an opportunity to maybe try to do it a little bit different or a little bit better even. Um, like I said, they've got a lot of work that they need to do, but they've got a lot of really good things going on. So find those things, Wayne, pay attention to them, and be better. <laughs> Yeah, contrary to with the way this started and some of the things we say often and the disappointment of last month, we do overall enjoy Dungeon Crate. We like Wayne and the work he's doing. We do. I I love getting surprise minis every month. Um, kind of. <laughs> as long as they have a purpose to me somehow or if I can find one. Like this stuff. Yeah. I'm not. These are just our thoughts. We're not sponsored by Dungeon Crate. We don't get these for free. We have to pay for them ourselves. And I'm not looking to be a shill for anybody. I, I'm just. We just want to be honest. We just want to be honest. You know, people look to these videos and stuff for. to see what's in it, see if it's valuable to them, and maybe even get some ideas. Um. Anyways, I suppose we should wrap this up. So, thanks for listening, looking at some of the pictures. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share it around. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Minds.com. And until next time, live to roll.